Line Rider is a simple flash toy. In it, you can draw lines, then set the sled rider down those lines. Blue ones are just normal slopes, red ones speed the rider up, and the green lines don't do anything but make the track look pretty. From this simple canvas, any number of things are possible, and some would even consider a skilled track to be art. But we're not here to talk about art, are we? No, we're here to talk about physics. So, does this strange little flash toy actually follow the laws that govern our universe? The answer is a little more complicated than you think. Let's be honest, this game is all about Newtonian mechanics. Let's say we had our little friend Bosch here on top of a flat surface, accelerated him to a speed, then launched him horizontally until he landed at a vertical distance H below. Thanks to our pal Newton, we know that the drop time is equal to the square root of 2h over g. If we solve for that g, we get g equals 2h over the drop time squared. Thus, if we find the vertical distance and the drop time, we can then calculate the acceleration due to gravity in the Line Rider world. Since this version of Line Rider comes with a timer, we can record the drop time perfectly. The game's frame rate is 40 frames per second, so each frame is 1 40th of a second. But what about the height? Well, since the game's creator is Slovenian and the average Slovenian is around 1.8 meters tall, we'll say the height of Bosch on his sled is about 1.5 meters. Then let's manufacture a height of 10 Bosch heights, or about 15 meters, and see what happens. Okay. We got a time of 1 second and 11 frames, which gives us an acceleration of around twice that of Earth's acceleration. This doesn't match up with our observations of the game, though, so I thought about the calculations again. We know the time's accurate, but our height is just a guess based on the character's height. What if our character is the size of a small child? This cuts the height, and thus the acceleration due to gravity, to around 9.2 meters per second squared which is consistent with our observations. This means, of course, that a lot of the Newtonian mechanics in this game mirror real life. But this is a video game, and video games, no matter how well-tested and brilliantly programmed they are, still have glitches. Fortunately for us, the most obvious and exploitable glitch in Line Rider is, in fact, explainable. Let's take a look at Gravity Wells. Now, if you haven't noticed by now, there's no friction in this game. None. Absolutely none at all. You can just keep going forever and ever and ever and... and you get the point. The lines then function as a normal force of sorts that bounces the rider in the direction perpendicular to the line segment. Notice the two sides of the line. Bosch can go through the blue side, but not the black side. Now if Bosch moves a contact point like his hand or a part of the sled perpendicular to the line from the blue side, the normal force pushes the contact point to the other side where the program thinks Bosch is supposed to be. Most of the time this kills him, but if you do it right, for one frame, the line pulls Bosch by that contact point towards a new direction. This is called a gravity well in the Line Rider community which is a bit of a misnomer, since it's actually the spontaneous generation of a normal force that is somehow larger than the force of gravity. But the name's catchy, so let's just keep calling them gravity wells. If you chain these gravity wells together, you can build speed and fling Bosch like crazy. The amount of force generated by a survivable well is directly proportional to two factors. The angle at which Bosch approaches the well and the distance Bosch is from the well. The sharper the angle, and the bigger the distance, the more powerful the force is. This works because the game's physics engine, if you recall, actually thinks Bosch needs to be on the other side of the line, and at sharper and sharper angles, the line functions less like a slope and more like a wall. Moreover, in real life, we don't have one-sided surfaces, so thankfully, this will probably never happen. Pinches are also explainable in a similar fashion. 
At first, it seems strange that pinching two parts of the sled together would cause Bosch to accelerate forward, but watch what happens when you look closely. Also, let's draw a free body diagram. The top part of the sled and the bottom part of the sled are at an angle to the lines, so the normal force on each line is actually diagonal. Since Bosch accelerates horizontally, the normal force is in the y direction and the weight forces cancel out with each other, leaving a net force to the right. At this point, thanks to acceleration lines, your knowledge of gravity wells, and pinches, you can now make some pretty amazing things in this game. The game is very open-ended, and there's lots of room to get creative with it. Try and find some glitches in other video games, too. It might actually make you a better player.